What's happening everybody, Zach Shrimp Room here. We're gonna do a little experiment, okay? We're gonna see how much buffering substrate you actually need for a Caradina tank. Um, little backstory, this tank here has been sitting for three, four months. pH hasn't buffered one bit. Um, if I remember correctly, I had a bag of soil sitting in the fish room, not closed up or anything. Put the substrate in and it just hasn't buffered. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna drain this tank. I'll keep the water, cause it's already, uh, the water should be fine. Um, actually, we'll test it. What do we get? Mm, I'll fill it up with new unbuffered water. The pH or the TDS is about 155. So we'll just drain the water and get rid of it. So we'll drain the tank, take the substrate out, and I wanna try these terracotta pots. They should be safe for shrimp. Um, I'm gonna take all the substrate out. I'm gonna see how much substrate it needs to fill up this. Um, as for size comparison, I mean, it'll take up about the width of the tank, but you just set it right in front of the <coughs> sponge filter and you won't see it anymore. So I'm hoping the amount of substrate that's in that tank will fit inside this pot. And all the other tanks in the, in the shrimp room have that much substrate in it. So the idea is long-term run, I'll just keep all the substrate in the tanks that's already in there because I like the color. And I'll just start filling up these pots and putting them in the tanks rather than having to tear down tanks and <clears throat> replacing the substrate because so i do like the substrate and from the tanks that have been running for a while it really doesn't seem to break down at all um not like amazonia where it turns into mud but you know what i'm saying so let's get to draining this tank and let's see how much substrate actually uh it needs to fill up one of these pots all righty so i've drained the tank and i've taken out about 97% of the substrate. There's just a little bit in there. And I was looking at some of my other tanks. Like this tank here really doesn't have that much substrate. It doesn't even reach the top of the rim. Um, this one either. This one doesn't even go over the rim. This one doesn't even go over the rim. So, I mean, the Sub the amount of substrate that I had in this tank was a little bit more than everything else because it was well over the rim and it's about that high so with these containers I had one full container flat across the top so with the smaller containers there's probably three small containers that I would need in the tank with just this substrate. Um, the only downside is with this big guy, I won't, I can use it on this rack. I can use it up here. There's a lot of space up top, but here I won't be able to use the big uh, pots. There's just not enough space. The small ones, they're just short enough to reach underneath here, and there isn't much space to mess around with. So what I would have to do, inside that shrimp. So what I have to do is put three of the small pots in these tanks, um, which is fine. It'll cover up the entire sponge filter. So I'd have two, two, and then I'd stack the third one on top of it. Uh, I think that would be a little bit more time effective and rather than breaking down a whole tank, taking out all the substrate and, and catching the shrimp, of course, that's another whole task in itself. So I think I'm gonna try that. Um, I am gonna get like some of this mesh here I'll go to Hobby Lobby and get some mesh because these pots have holes on the bottom. I'll just put the mesh in the bottom and fill up the substrate. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, run to the store later on, get some mesh, fill in 
in the bottom of the pot with the mesh. I'll put the pot in here. Um, I'll take out, uh, I don't know if I want to take, is that, hmm. I think I'll just take the, the rest of the substrate out and make it a bare bottom. And I'll put that big pot in here and see what happens with, you know, the buffering of the water. And it'll be like a week experiment to see how and if that much substrate buffers that amount of water. Alrighty, so I went to Hobby Lobby. I picked this up, it was a buck, 99 cents. Super small, fine mesh. So I have three pots here that I'm gonna put, I think this is an eight and a half gallon tank. So I'm gonna, I cut out just a small square because these have holes on the bottom of them so that when I replace the substrate, the soil won't fall out because the strainer will be there. So these are gonna fit just like this in the tank and I'm gonna fill up with uh, each pot with substrate and then we'll start filling up the tank. All right, we got the tank filling up. <clears throat> yep, and that's kind of satisfying watching. Doop. Oh, the other one, wow, that's a lot of water tension up top. There it goes. Yep, we got this tank getting filled up, and then once this one's done, I'm gonna come over here and do this tank. Looking at it, the, uh, that pot in there doesn't look like it's, you know, it takes up space, but it's not like crazy. I don't know, we'll have to see. Hopefully this works. But I'll get back to you guys when all the tanks are filled up, both tanks. Well, we got both the tanks all filled up right there and this one right here. So they're filled up. This is just going to be the part one of this little experiment. Uh, but I'll, I'll get back to you guys later on this week and do a water test and see how it goes. So yeah, if you guys like this kind of video, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.